Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics. And what I'd like to talk to today is uh, politicians' financial affairs and specifically about whether or not they should really reveal all of them. And I'm going to start off with, of course, the most extreme example of this, um, Donald Trump. Because amongst other statements of dubious veracity, such as not playing golf or not having holidays, Donald Trump in 2016 said that he would leave his businesses in order to focus on the presidency. It's by convention uh, rather than law that US presidents publish their tax returns and pass on control of their business interests to others for the period for which they're going to be president. Of course, that doesn't in itself prevent conflicts of interest. I mean, if part of your business portfolio involves investment, say, in the oil industry and you organise, just for a hypothetical example, a war against an oil nation, you could still argue conflicts of interest. Presidents haven't forgotten what their businesses are called or how they make their money, but the practice does at least make conflicts of interest much less likely. In addition, showing your tax returns shows that you have nothing to hide. Politicians decide what level of taxation their citizens should pay in order to keep the machinery of their society turning. Now, it's important to know that the same politicians are following those same rules just like everybody else. Needless to say, President Trump, as we must now call him, still goes golfing, still has loads of holidays, and has not handed over control of his businesses or submitted tax returns for public scrutiny. Now, as I said, my understanding is that this is not in itself illegal. It was merely a convention, uh, an act of good faith that past presidents have done so. Now, to begin with, Trump deflected criticism by saying that, well, he couldn't show his tax returns because they were being audited. But the IRS said, no, it's fine to disclose your tax returns, even if they're being audited. And in addition, Michael Cohen, his former lawyer, said in a testimony to Congress that those tax returns weren't being audited at the time anyway. Now, whilst the Republicans were controlling both houses, there weren't really serious calls for him to publish those documents. Uh, but once the Democrats gained control of the House of Representatives last year, they're now demanding that he hand them over. In addition, late last year, the state of New York began investigating claims that Donald Trump helped his parents avoid millions of dollars of taxes in the 1990s. Needless to say, Donald Trump is still not complying and his lawyer has said that it is motivated by partisan politics. Now, this is probably true. I mean, all politics in the US seem to be heavily partisan these days. I'm sure there is some cooperation in small, unreported areas of government, but we're mostly being fed a diet of hate and division, not unlike in the UK. But the bottom line in this case is whether or not the House of Representatives has the power to demand those documents. And as far as I've been able to tell, it does. And with Donald Trump regularly holding meetings in his capacity as president with foreign diplomats who keep booking themselves into his hotels, there is plenty of justification for investigating conflicts of interest. Donald Trump himself said the president can't have a conflict of interest. In a statement chilling for its similarity to Richard Nixon's defence of his actions in Watergate. Now again, quite incredibly, even if conflicts of interest are proven, and I mean by an official investigation, you'd have to be simple to believe that they aren't actually happening, then even this wouldn't be illegal, simply unbecoming. Although it is illegal for federal employees to have a conflict of interest, it's not for the president, the vice president or members of Congress. In other words, the ones who have the most power to subvert public money. And I'm sure some will ask why, if none of this is illegal, why I and others are making such a fuss about it. And it's the same argument about not paying taxes. People will say, ah, but tax avoidance is legal. It's only tax evasion that's illegal as if they're two different actions, but they aren't. Tax avoidance and tax evasion are both ways of not paying taxes. It's just that one is legal and one is illegal. And why is there this distinction? Because legislators have allowed wealthy people to avoid paying taxes in return for bribes, or donations as they prefer to call them. But this is both unfair and harmful. It's unfair because only the wealthy can afford to participate in tax avoidance schemes. I mean, that's a perverse statement, isn't it? it's possible to be too poor to not pay tax. But it's also harmful because those taxes should be going to the Treasury, where it can be used by government to strengthen society. By avoiding your fair share of tax, you are actively weakening government, and that's the furthest thing from patriotism. And as well, for the people who are voting these people in, 
Those are having to pick up the slack. They are having to pay more taxes to be able to just do the basic functions of government. But that's the situation with Donald Trump. But it raises the issue of declaring earnings for politicians in general and in all countries. All of this nonsense might come as some surprise to citizens of countries where everyone's earnings are a matter of public record. You know, this is not the norm. It's just that in the UK and the US in particular, as well as some others, earnings are considered a deeply personal piece of information. And it's a con job that hurts most people. So, for example, in business, it helps that an employer um, doesn't want their employees to reveal details of their pay. Um, you know, it, it's good that employees guard their salary with the utmost secrecy. Why? Does it help the worker to keep their salary quiet? No, how could it? But it helps the employer because they could then have a dozen workers, all with the same qualifications, all with the same experience, all doing the same work, but being paid different amounts. The pushier ones at, at, at interview will command the larger salary. But the meeker ones who don't like to push or even talk about salary at the interview, uh, they end up on the smaller, the lower end of the scale. But how would they react if they found out that the person next to them doing exactly the same work, maybe not even as well, but let's say as well, let's say all things equal, and they found out they were being paid 20% more? How are they going to react then? So it would make sense in general for us all to be more open and honest about income. It would also be better if it all had to be declared and went on a public register, as happens in some countries. Now, this idea fills people in the UK and the US with absolute horror. They think, no, I don't want to reveal that. But why? What do you think could possibly be a negative consequence of this? It's just something we've had ingrained in us. But for politicians, it is absolutely vital. All politicians, from lowly local councillors to the Prime Minister herself, has the power to dictate not only policy, but public spending in a way that will help some businesses and fail to help others, if not actively hinder others. Knowing what their income is and where it comes from will not in itself prevent conflicts of interest, but it will allow people to easily spot them quickly and shine a spotlight on it we can then hope that public outrage would do enough to dissuade that behaviour. In addition, we need to know that politicians are paying their share of the tax burden that those same politicians are expecting of us. In a recent interview, someone put it to Jacob Rees-Mogg that one of his business interests had earned him £7 million in the last two years. The interviewer asked if it was true, to which Jacob Rees-Mogg uh, simply replied that he didn't have to declare those earnings. Now, the journalist didn't really need to ask, if you know how many shares he has and you know what the dividend is, it's not a difficult calculation. But it's the fact that Rees Mogg didn't have to declare it and is clearly not going to, which means that we have no idea whether or not he'll be paying tax on those earnings. And yet he expects us to pay our taxes so that we keep society, the society that puts him near the top of the tree, going. And that is deeply unfair. So, let me know what you think uh, down below. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe for further content, click the bell notification as well, please. And until next time, I'll see you later.